This video is the last in my series on anarchism and Marxism. I wanted to round it off by offering an idea or two on what communist movement could look like. Let's start with books. Building communism might require reading. It depends how much you've learned from experience. On the one hand, it's fine to read the books from the 19th century about what communism is, just let those texts inform rather than dictate to you. People who very strictly follow their interpretations of Marx and Engels and so on can get really dogmatic about the precise way to have a revolution. Well, things have changed since their time. We need new analysis, too. Like, you could read Capital, but you could just read Capital in the 21st Century by Piketty, or the work of David Harvey, or Emmanuel Wallerstein, or Cedric Robinson. I actually have a video on which books I recommend you reading, and there are plenty of good books that I've never read, of course. You could read Engels' Principles of Communism, but it's pretty outdated. Everything about how to do communism from the 19th century is outdated. Instead, you could just work out your own basic principles for your organization or commune. I think our activity should be informed by decolonial, feminist, communist, anarchist, egoist, and nihilist thinking, along with basic ecology, but you do you. Don't be turned off by the words we use. They're overlapping theories of liberation, and I think they all have a place in the future. When organizing, we shouldn't use jargon and old symbols. It really turns people away. I'm only calling it communism now because that's the subject of this series. You could just call it organizing. You could call it mutual aid. Mutual aid just means people helping and empowering others as equals. It's the basis of communal living and organizing. It might take the form of community defense, safe havens for migrants, refugees, and so on, people running from abusers or police. It could mean providing food and health care to anyone inside or outside the commune, or whatever, whatever else is necessary where you are. Getting people involved in improving and protecting their own communities provides people with joy and meaning in their lives that jobs and white picket fences don't. We need to educate people while doing this work, but our work doesn't need to have a bunch of hammers and sickles and circle A's on it. Like, sure, if you're an anarchist and a punk and it's part of your aesthetic and you can bring in people that way, then great. You'll still need to educate the people around you. Like, lots of punks become conservatives or even fascists because they haven't internalized values like freedom for everyone. Educating the public should be about what solidarity means, uh, how to fight the rise of the right wing and keep your community safe, how to make communities independent of states and corporations and banks and money, and why that's important. If you're talking to someone who believes in progress, it's good to be able to present a vision of the future. But it's not something we can promise or even predict. And I think we need to say that. A ton of work needs to be done to reach that point. We don't want anyone to get lost in imagining the future when the present dystopia is where we are. I use a picture of the way things could be in part as a basis for criticism of the present. Like, I'm not saying that these systems we live under are wrong because they're better in other parts of the world or used to be better and we should go back to that. I'm saying there's no reason other than violence that we can't all eat, live in homes where we want, and basically live as we want. If we got rid of that violence, everyone would be free to do what they want the way they want. The possibilities would be endless. But I also think hope is not a winning strategy. Hope usually leads to disappointment. 
And people will burn out if you keep giving them hope and then dashing it on the rocks. Trying to work through or with oppressive systems instead of against them is based on hope. Parties trying to form a vanguard have no chance of succeeding. Trying to revive old states and rulers through old means will not get us anywhere. A successful revolution will inevitably mean not following some party line, but living certain values. We don't want national liberation. We want to destroy the nation state. We don't want human rights. We want to be free to organize our lives the way we want. We don't want, at least, some of us don't want to kill fascists and abusers, or at the least, we want to make it unnecessary in the long term. We want a society free of all oppressive authoritarian thinking. After all, our opponents aren't just people, they're ideologies and systems built on those ideologies. As such, I think there's more merit in destruction than creation. What needs to be destroyed is all around us. What needs to be built will be built if oppressive systems are eliminated. Because people will build and figure things out when they're free. It's not as important to have a specific end point in mind, especially when we have no idea if we'll, be, if we'll live long enough to see it. Communism is the negation of capitalism. So how will communists or the commune disrupt capitalism? How will it sabotage the processes of capitalism? Like, yes, we should be educating and raising awareness, but at some point, people are either aware already and, uh, and like, don't want to join us and don't care. So we need tactics that disrupt and dismantle. We can't just wait until everyone joins us and then act. Communism isn't about hoping for a distant future, but creating that future today. It's not a question of fighting for communism. What matters is the communism that is lived in the fight itself. In theory, the commune is at the heart of communism. Communes are small, autonomous societies based on to each according to their need. Everything shared, egalitarian, non-hierarchical. But the commune isn't just a place people live and find joy and grow vegetables and have group sex. That last one isn't even necessary. The commune is the center of resistance to the capitalist, imperialist, white supremacist system. The Invisible Committee emphasizes the commune doesn't have to be geographically located. A commune forms every time a few people, freed of their individual straitjackets, decide to rely only on themselves and measure their strength against reality. Every wildcat strike is a commune. Every building occupied and collectively and on a clear basis is a commune. The action committees of 1968 were communes, as were the slave maroons in the United States or Radio Alice in Bologna in 1977. Every commune seeks to be its own base. It seeks to dissolve the question of needs. It seeks to break all economic dependency and all political subjugation. It degenerates into a milieu the, mil the moment it loses contact with the truths on which it is founded. There are all kinds of communes that wait neither for the numbers nor the means to get organized, and even less for the right moment, which never arrives. So a commune could just be a few people, like an affinity group. People who trust each other and are on the same page with regard to ends and means. And if you don't know anyone and you don't know where to start, find anti-colonial and anti-racist organizers near where you live. They're probably as close to living communism as anyone around. Instead of white guys paternalistically protecting vulnerable minorities, the commune is oppressed people defending each other and liberating themselves. Instead of tearing up the land to build 
big structures and control large swaths of territory. We need to be stewards of the land. Communes are sites of the production of new values, spaces for exploring new forms of organizing. Communes shouldn't be isolated units, but coordinate activities with others around the world. Communes don't have to be out in the middle of nowhere. They can exist in cities, too. Your neighborhood block or apartment complex could be a commune, though, of course, everyone would need to agree with its basic values. As a self-contained but open society, communes destitute the state, i.e. render it inoperative and powerless, by challenging the need for state institutions. Autonomous communes can break away from the capitalist system, form liberated territories, and form a base from which to attack the state. There are disadvantages to this approach. <laughs> of course, for instance, if everyone's in the same place, law enforcement knows where to go to find you. There need to be subversives and radicals everywhere, pointing out basic facts and agitating to do something about them. From Living Communism, first link in the description. The territory becomes unreadable, opaque to authority. We don't want to occupy the territory, we want to be the territory. This is how communism is built on a large scale. Territory is inhabited and controlled. The people living within the archipelago of liberated territory establish contact and material links between themselves, learn to provide for their needs, and establish liberated relationships with each other in the land. The means of existence are appropriated and or collectively constructed. Organic gardens and farms are established to directly feed people, free clinics to heal the sick, and worker cooperatives to produce for the needs of the community rather than profit. The material construction of another world deprives capitalist state power of its capacity to manage and control us. This is ultimately what the Invisible Committee means by destitution, by becoming ungovernable. Secession happens not just in isolated rural communes, but in the hearts of cities, in small college towns, and in the connections between communes everywhere. Instead of being guided by a science of questionable merit, be guided by values. Instead of a party, there is no revolutionary center or vanguard. You can still plan and set goals for resistance, just don't try to plan a whole society and force people to follow your plan. We need to be radical in our ideas and practice while proving that free and equal societies are preferable to the dying world of capitalism and white supremacy.